Hello and welcome again for the another session of LVCOM video telecasting series. Uh, today we are going to cover the session uh, geometric construction. Uh, my, hello myself Satyam Chauhan from uh, Atme Institute of Technology and Science Diploma Studies uh, Mechanical Engineering Department. Um, today we are going to see uh, geometric construction uh, that is the third chapter of the basic engineering drawing. Uh, today we are going to see uh, geometric construction and how to create the geometries. Basically in engineering drawing and design uh, we come across lots of shapes uh, for example circle, lines, polygons, curves uh, etc. Uh, so it is very essential to know what is geometry and how to create it. Uh, basic, basically geometry can be created by the basic elements like points, lines, tri triangles and the combination of the basic elements that is called primitives. So today we will see how to uh, connect the uh, how to make the drawings with the help of these basic elements. So let's start today's session. Uh, first of all, the very basic things that is called points and line. So what is points and line? The first point is point. Point is a basically it shows the location in space and the line is the distance between the two points. So line represent the length between two points. So initially we need to understand what is the point and what is the role of point in the engineering drawing. A point is generally is a theoretical location that is neither width, height or depth. So the point is simply shown by a cross of a small lines. It describes the exact location in space. A point is represented in technical drawing as a small cross as I said and it should be is just look like a dust and it looks like a 3 mm cross. So uh, that is point. Uh, the next we have line a geometric primitive that has length. So the line has only length and direction but no thickness. So line has no thickness it means it has zero thickness. It may be straight, curved or a combination of this for example arc. So arc is made up of line. Line also have important relationship or condition such as parallel, intersecting and tangent. In today's session we will see one by one how to create a parallel line, intersecting line, for example perpendicular line and how to create tangents and various, various form of tangents. So one by one we will see different examples of how to create the geometry. Further moving on, lines is a specific length and non-specific length. So basically length has infinite number of length. So we show the length just for the, our convenience and that is called line segment. So basically it's ray. Ray is a straight line that extend to infinity from a specified point. So line is represented by a line and a both side arrow that is a line with infinite limit. So here is the geometric primitives. The first one on the left side is point. As I said it is located it, it looks like a cross hair. So in line if you want to see where is a point it can be denoted by leader and on a C we can see the point is denoted by a small 3 mm crosshair. 
D is a straight line. Basically, it represents infinite length. E is a straight line, definite length. Horizontal line can be represented by horizontal line segment as shown in F and in G, it is it represented by the vertical line. Parallel line can be shown as a cross line segments as shown in the edge and perpendicular line can be represented by a vertical line and a horizontal line. But remember that perpendicular line cannot be represented in the manufacturing drawing by the symbol shown in K because in manufacturing drawing it can be understood as a welding symbol. On a further moving M the, sh the shown is the length is arc A B C. We will see in the next coming slide that how to show the uh, circle, how to show the center, how to represent the arc. So basically to represent arc we need at least three point. So it is represented by A B C and on the very last in the end it is free curve. Basically to draw line and another, another geometry elements and the another geometry like polygons, triangle we need instruments for example scale and compass. But to draw free curves we generally do not use any instrument and free curves can be drawn by hands. Further moving on geometric pri primitives, the basic 2D geometric primitives from which other more com complex geometric forms are derived. So these are the basic point lines circle and arcs can form another complex geometrical forms that we are going to discuss today uh, coming in coming slides. So how to create this complex elements or complex geometric figure by the using the basic geometric primitives it will be shown in some of the examples. First of all we will see what is angles. An angle is formed by two intersecting lines. So for example a complete circle is a 360 degree. So it is a combination of two lines basically overlapping two lines and it can form 360 degree. Angle a straight line has 180 degree. So there is no angle between the straight line but it, there is angle 180 degree and that is called supplementary angle. So two angle which forms 90 degree that is in the C that is called supplement complementary complementary angle and the two angles which sums 180 degree that is called supplementary angle. On the next D if the angle is less than 90 that is called acute angle. Acute angle is less than 90 degree and it represented in D. On the next one E is more than 90 degree but less than 180 degree that is represented as a obtuse angle. On the, on the next is complement array degree that is 90 degree as I said that two angle which sums 90 degree that is complementary degree and two angles which sums 180 degree that is called supplement array angles as represented in G. On the next with the three lines we can form triangle. So triangle is a plane figure which is bounded by three straight lines. So very basic polygon if we can say the triangle is a combination of three line three straight 
sides which can be formed by three straight lines and the sum of the interior angles is always 180 degree it means the triangle has interior angles together 180 degree so any triangle has all the angles which sums 180 degree on the next we can see various examples of triangles on the very first is equilateral triangle in equilateral triangle all the sides and all the angles are the same next on the b we have isoscale triangle which has two sides and a two angle equal so as we can see the bottom line is called base and on the sides there are two sides which are symmetrical it means they are same the top edge of the uh, triangle is called vertex on the next one is scalen triangle is represented in C we can see the triangle has one side it's uh, no sides or angle are equal so in a triangle if there is no side or no angle is equal it can be called scalene triangle basically it also represented as the bottom line one line as a base and the height is called altitude so what the height is represented in altitude it is used to find the area of the triangle which will not be discussed in this session but maybe in the later session in the D the triangle represented as a right angle which is quite popular triangle and can be frequently used to generate the geometry right and right triangle can be used uh, to form lot of geometry uh, we know the Pythagoras theorem uh, which is used in the right triangle uh, on the next one E the Pythagoras theorem has been discussed um, let's move on further on the F right triangle in a semicircle so assume any point C on a semicircle so the angle ACB will be 90 degree as we can see on the F let's move on the further from three side to four sides so a quadrilateral a quadrilateral is a plane figure bounded by the four straight sides so any polygon or any regular straight sizes which forms four sides close geometry is called quadrilateral if the opposite sides are parallel the quadrilateral is also a parallelogram so here is a condition if the opposite sides are parallel then the quadrilateral is represent or is called a parallelogram in next slide we can see various example of the quadrilaterals the first one is square which is all sides and all the angles are accurately correct and equal so in square all the sides are the same and having the same length on the next rectangle has two sides parallels and the opposite sides are the same and that is called rectangle the third quadrilateral has two sides parallel to each other but they are two sets of equal sides that is called rhombus which is also frequently used in geometric construction um, the next one on the D which is rhomboid has the opposite side so here is a little difference between rhombus and rhomboid so in rhombus 
all the sides having equal length but not equal angle and in rhomboid all the sides are the two pairs of equal sides are there but two sets of angles are equal and on the e there is trapezoid trapezoid has two sides one only one set of two sides which are parallel to each other and on the trapezium has no equal side or no equal angle so if a quadrilateral has all the different sides and different angles then it is called trapezium next moving on further is called polygon a polygon is any plane figure bounded by straight sides if the polygon has equal angles and equal sides it can be inscribed or circumscribed around a circle and is called a regular polygon so polygon is formed by the equal sides of the line so it is also a closed figure which is formed by the equal size and equal angles so it can be equal or it can be different angles but if the lines are equal sides it's called regular polygon so basically it is a bounded straight sides solids bounded by a plane and on the next 